Hello, Christian McDonald here, and this is the third progress report for the WireGuard package that I have been developing for PFSense. So I know that in the last video, I promised that there would be no more breaking changes to the upgradability of the package for those of you that have been testing out the builds that I've been posting on GitHub. And unfortunately, uh, I lied, and that is not the case. Um, this next uh, version um, will introduce breaking changes. Um, however, it's now is the time to make those changes before um, the package is considered for inclusion in the mainline PFSense package repository. Um, so for those of you that have been playing along at home, installing the releases uh, manually on GitHub, I'm going to assume that you are of um, of, a, of certain competency for cleaning up your config and going through some manual processes in order to upgrade between versions without breaking things. Um, but this is a pretty significant update, not only to the schema, but also to the user interface. So let's start off by looking at the UI. So again, VPN WireGuard. And right off the bat, you're going to see uh, there's a new tab called Peers. Now, one of the things that I mentioned in the first status report is I have visions for um, features like the, the ability to export um, peer configurations that are importable um, either into other PFSense boxes or any WireGuard um, client that can read, um, you know, the configuration files. Um, and also to be able to produce QR codes that you can just scan right on your phone um, through the mobile app. Um, so there was also some shortcomings too with the the user interface that we had before, where the peer the peer edit screen was a like a modal pop up um, that lived on the tunnel page. Now what that meant was that peers were permanently married to a tunnel. So you made a tunnel first, and then you added then you created peers that were permanently married to that tunnel. And this marriage between the tunnel and the peer um, was actually all the way down to the XML in the, in the, in the uh, config.xml file. Um, now, one of the things that I have had re uh, requested is the ability to toggle tunnels on and off and the ability to toggle peers on and off. And I could see no other way of trying to shoehorn that capability into the old, uh, the old user interface, which actually was directly linked to how the configuration files were actually parsed and written to disk. Um, so I, I knew that I needed to take some time and redesign the user interface to decouple the relationship between tunnels and peers. So that's what I've done over the last, uh, three or four days. Um, I would like to add that I have submitted a pull request with NetGate. Um, they're currently in review um, of that. However, there has, again, there's a lot of changes that are coming down, so I'm sure that this is going to further delay, um, uh, further delay any kind of developmental release in the 2.6 uh, package repository, but I hope that you guys and stay patient because I think it's going to be for the best. So let's look at some of the, the changes in the user interface and um, what the changes to the XML schema um, means for the future of the package. So we're on the tunnels page. This is still the, you know, your entry point into the package. When you click on VPN WireGuard, it takes you to the tunnels page. Um, and you can see that there's been some reorganization of some things. Um, I've tried to make things a little bit more consistent between what information is shown, you know, when we're looking at a list of tunnels or a list of peers, for example. Um, so in this case, we are showing, you know, the first 16, 16 characters of the public key. And when we actually show the peers, um, not much has changed there either. Um, we are showing only the first 16 characters of the public key here as well. Um, I'm doing that because it's just going to be easier Moving forward, if we want to add columns, if we're truncating 
information that we don't really, probably don't even need the full thing there anyways. Um, but I'm open to feedback. Um, so if we go over here, there's a couple of new action buttons that you haven't seen before. The first one is an add peer button. Um, you can click on that. It'll take you to the page to add a peer. I'll show you that in just a second. And there's also this uh, toggle. Um, so click to enable or disable the, the tunnel. Now I'm actually, I'm actually not writing over this tunnel. I was actually using this tunnel earlier. Um, so I can actually show you this uh, a live demo here. Um, but if I click this toggle, um, it'll actually turn the tunnel off. And if we go to status, you can see that the tunnel's gone. And if we go back and we toggle the tunnel back on, you can see that the tunnel comes back. Um, so that's, that's how that works. So now you can quickly toggle tunnels on and off at will and um, without having to delete the tunnels or go into them and disable them. So that's kind of neat. So there's a little, uh, that little quick link there on the action to just toggle the tunnel off and you can toggle it back on and everything is handled on the back end. Um, let's actually double click on the tunnel and go into the tunnel um, configuration. Um, a lot of changes have been made here as well. Uh, the first one is uh, um, making good on a promise that I made in the first video to replace all entries, all, all inputs that are asking for comma separated values. Um, so here I have um, taken some UI elements from some other pages on, on, on in PF Sense, and now we can add interface addresses just by um, using um, just by using these input fields here, and um, it, it works it works really well. So um, everything is still saved pretty much the same way on the back end. Um, we're just using this to uh, make it a little more intuitive. Um, from a user's perspective instead of having to enter in a comma separated list. Um, again, these UI elements already exist in PFSense and there's really no reason not to use them, so we're using them. So we just delete those. Um, what else has changed here? Um, we now have, uh, so the peer configuration here, this is not the only place that you can, um, you can add or change peers. Um, but this is gonna show you the list of peers for this tunnel. Um, so if we, uh, we can double click on one of those and actually drill into the peer. And this is the new peer configurator. So this is not a pop-up anymore like we were used to seeing on the old version. Um, this is a little more, I think a little more intuitive. Um, first of all, you can now um, create unassigned peers. So you can actually kind of pre-provision peers um, that are not bound to a tunnel. Um, so if we come out to peers here and we can add a peer, um, we can leave this unassigned and I can just create a tunnel, um, leave everything blank. We'll just give it a you know a public key because it's going to yell at us if we don't, and hit save. And I can write out a um, a peer that's not bound to a tunnel. Um, and I can quickly add it to a tunnel. Let's say that I wanted this peer on ton WG zero. I can just click edit and click here uh, under tunnel and just assign it to um, WG zero and hit save. And now it is now a member of um, the WG zero tunnel. So that's pretty cool. Um, we'll go back to that peer. I've added some kind of um, quality of life improvements. Um, there's now a checkbox for dynamic endpoint. So by default, this is this is selected. So this is if this peer is um, is if this peer is behind um, NAT um, or otherwise is not directly um, doesn't have a, a port that's directly accessible um, over over the internet or over your WAN or however you're you're reaching that endpoint. Um, so this is checked by default if it's dynamic. If you uncheck that, it's, it exposes the endpoint address and the endpoint in, port fields um, as normal. So you can just check that and, um, and cycle that on and off. Um, again, we also have, um, we also have the, um, the UI elements for defining allowed IPs. So you can just come in here and um, let's say that I wanted to say 10.1.25.0 and I'm going to allow that entire subnet, that entire slash 24 subnet. I can just click that and click on save. And, um, and now that is an allowed, um, that is an allowed IP address. Um, there's still some, some work that needs to be done in order to create routes. Um, currently we're using WG quick on the back end, and WG quick is, either, is, is, is really an all or nothing type thing. Um, so WG quick will either create routes for every allowed IP or none of them. So I'm currently uh, investigating um, moving away from WG Quick. Um, there's, there's several benefits to doing that. Um, 
that I'm not really going to talk about in this video. Um, we might address them in the future. Um, but currently right now, um, for example, this 10.1.25.0 slash um, 24 network, if I actually wanted to send traffic to, you know, if I want actually wanted to, you know, direct traffic out this, this peer, this tunnel interface, you know, uh, to, to get to this network, I actually I'd have to create a static route uh, in PFSense to do that. Um, so that's going to change. We're going to have an option, you know, we're going to handle all of that just like, you know, the handling in 2.5 uh, worked. Um, but that's still um, that's still not uh, not working, uh, not done. Um, what else? We have some changes to the status page. Um, so under package version, we're now formatting that um, in, a, in a pretty in a pretty way. Um, the, the connection status. Um, there's a pull request currently on the project for a new a redesign of the connection status that I need to uh, to look into to merge that in. Um, I've just been so focused on the UI um, changes that I haven't had a chance to check that out yet. Um, but other than that, that's that's pretty much it. Um, this is a pretty pretty big pretty big change, pretty big update. Um, again, you're going to have to delete the package. Um, you know, make sure that when you, I would back up your config. Um, make sure that you uncheck the keep configuration. That should absolutely c clean out your config.xml. Um, but I would go and do a double check to make sure that it is actually clean because when you load this latest version, the, the schema is completely different. Um, the, uh, so yeah, really the only part that hasn't changed is where we're, how we're storing these general settings and the user interface settings, but everything else has changed. Um, one of the, also one of the reasons for doing that is because um, it came to my attention um, through um, some guys that are, that are working with me in Discord, that the old schema actually was only um, usable if NetGate, um, so the old schema relied on elements that are, are allowed to be arrays. Um, and it's a technical thing, I'm not really gonna go into it, but basically using the old schema meant that we were depending on we were depending on um, WireGuard related bits that were actually left in PFSense. Um, I know that that when WireGuard was removed from PFSense, they reverted lots of commits that were, you know, at that, that added WireGuard support. But there's actually a few that actually have uh, actually haven't been removed. And if those if those commits were reverted, the old schema would not work. Um, because we were assuming that the tunnel tag um, that we were using for storing tunnels is one of those, you know, tags that has been blessed um, as one that can be um, that can be arrayable um, in the config.xml. So we have replaced that with a generic item tag. Um, actually, I'm going to show you that if we go into diagnostics and edit file, we can actually look at the config.xml here. Um, and if we go down to WireGuard, you can, oops, yeah, WireGuard, let's just scroll down here. Um, you can see that there's now three kind of parent tags. There's config, and that's where we'll store all the settings kind of for the package. We have tunnels, which contains a collection of items, and then each item is a tunnel. And then we have peers, and peers again, contain a collection of items that then represent the, the data for that peer. So that, that is a pretty big change. So instead of peers being um, you know, married to a tunnel actually in the config.xml, we're actually breaking that out in more of a relational database type, type, type way. And then we're relating the peer back to the tunnel just with a new tag. Um, on the peer config. So this is, a, I think, a much better way moving forward. It's going to give us a lot more flexibility. And again, it opens up a lot of features. Um, you know, the ability to toggle peers on and off, the ability to create peers that are unassigned, and even the ability to um, move peers between between tunnels. So if I had a, if I created a, a, diff, a new tunnel here, um, we'll just call this, you know, test two, give it a private key, whatever. Um, we'll give it an address. We'll do 
25.1 slash 24, we'll hit save. And then let's say that I wanted to move one of these peers over to tunnel WG1, I could just edit that and um, go up to tunnel and and choose choose that tunnel and hit save. And now that tunnel is now um, part of that new tunnel that I created. So we can now do a lot more. Um, this is a pretty big update. Um, I'm still working really hard on it. So um, again, if you're interested in supporting my work, uh, check out the link below in the description for a link to my GitHub page and GitHub sponsors. Um, we got a lot of ideas um, in the pipe for this package, and hopefully uh, soon it'll actually be available to you right through the package uh, manager in PFSense. So uh, thanks for watching and stay tuned.